So can someone please, for the love of God, explain to me why the ever-loving this guy is still in Motley Crue. And this guy was fired. Basically, the talent. Motley Crue have been through a lot of shit over the years, all the while claiming they were this big, strong band of brothers who stick through anything and everything together. Well, except for when one of them can't tour because he's suffering from a lifelong crippling disease. Yeah, real brotherly, guys. Real, real brotherly. And shall we just remind ourselves that one of these people quite literally took the life of another person, a close friend of the band, due to his reckless, drunken behavior, and then only served a few days in prison and got out early because he paid the courts a couple of million dollars. Yet, yeah, that wasn't Mick Mars. That was the abominable snowman. Now, the last time I checked, Mick Mars can still absolutely rip on guitar, albeit not like he used to, but at least his guitar playing still sounds great, all things considered. Whereas Vince, on the other hand, well, yeah. And I saw Motley Crue last year without Mick Mars, and I actually left halfway through because it just kind of sucked, and I'm still a Crue fan. And let's also point out that Vince Neil had his own dedicated section on Wikipedia to all of his legal issues over the years. Assault, sexual assault, another assault, drink driving again, battery and disorderly conduct, and even fraud. Oh, and battery for assaulting a woman. Again. Let's have a little look at Mick Mars's rap sheet. <laughs> Motley Crue would rather have an actual murderer in their band who assaults people and continues to drink drive, and all the while with about as much talent as Michael Jackson's corpse. Whilst at the same time quite literally firing the actual talent of the band. In an interview with Variety magazine just last year, Mick said the following about his former brothers. I carried them for years. Those guys have been hammering on me since 87, trying to replace me. They haven't been able to do that because I'm the guitar player. I helped form this band. It's my name I came up with. My ideas, my money that I had from a backer to start this band. It wouldn't have gone anywhere. Now, I can't imagine why they've wanted him out of the band for so long. 1987 was the year Crew would release Girls, Girls, Girls. It landed them a number two chart position in the US, has since gone platinum multiple times, and arguably one of the band's greatest records. I can guarantee about 99% of you picture this scene when I said Girls, Girls, Girls. That's how iconic the record was, and still is. So has there ever been a real valid reason to try and kick Mick Mars out of the band? While it seems Crew have been trying to kick Mars out almost from the start, Bob Daisley, formerly the bass player for Ozzy Osbourne, recounted in his book that members of Crew asked him about how to fire Mick back in 1984, allegedly, but he strongly advised against it, saying Mars was an integral part of the band's chemistry. The thing that they keep pushing for many years is that I have a bad memory, and that's full-blown, out-of-proportion crap. Around 2012, when they first started saying that my memory was bad and I didn't remember the songs, I came home and saw all my doctors, because I keep myself together because I'm old. They had all of the 10th Street people there, probably about 5 or 6 people, versus all of my doctors going, there's nothing wrong with him, and they're still playing that game with me. I mean, if we're trying to fire members of the band because they can't remember their parts, then shouldn't this guy have gone quite a while ago? He doesn't even sing the words anymore, he just makes noises. So no, the truth is I want to retire from touring because of my AS. I don't have a problem remembering the songs. I don't have a problem with any of that stuff. But I do have a problem with them constantly, the whole time, telling me that I lost my memory. No, wrong. That's wrong, absolutely wrong. Nikki Six, on the other hand, saw things quite differently. 
In a tweet posted shortly after the Variety article was published, Six seemed to imply that Mars may be under the influence of shady lawyers, that he somehow is being coerced into thinking he was shafted by the rest of Motley Crue. Sad day for us, and we don't deserve this considering how many years we've been propping him up. We still wish him the best and hope he finds lawyers and managers who aren't damaging him. We love you, Mick. Mick Mars even claims that he's the one that tells other band members how the songs go, so how can it be his memory that's the issue, unless of course they're testing him. Prior to this particular stadium tour when we rehearsed, the first thing that happened when I walked in, Nikki Six was like, hey Mick, how did that part go? I can't remember. So that's how our rehearsals went. I rehearsed all of these songs for three months, every day, solid, twice a day. When I walked into this rehearsal for the stadium tour and I said, pick a song, I know them all, the response was, we're not going to do it that way, to quote Nikki Six. Mick even claims that all of Nikki's bass was recorded for the last stadium tour that Mick played with them, and some of Tommy's drums were also. And I mean, let's be honest, Mick Mars is in his 70s, so would anyone really blame him if he actually forgot part of a song or an intro. I wouldn't say this is grounds to fire a band member. And shall we all remember the fact that on January the 28th, 2014, they all signed a secession of touring agreement, vowing they could never legally tour again. That was it. 2016, I'll never forget it. I think it was New Year's Eve, Staples Center, LA. We all said goodbye. That was the dopest 32 to 33 years of our lives. We're out. This is the best way ever to go out on top. Mic drop, boom, see ya. We're out. And that was it. We're done. We didn't really speak to each other for probably a year. They could have bowed out gracefully, but instead decided to rip up that agreement after their biopic The Dirt came out in 2019. And although fans seemed to love it, the critics weren't too fond of it. Rolling Stone said this is rock bad boy lore as rocking bore. An endless parade of recreated after-party ecstasy and emptiness that robs the dirt of the vicarious thrill it had on the page. The sense that you shouldn't be having this much of a second-hand high reading about musicians acting like horrible people, but still seeming living the dream heroic. It was a huge success for Motley Crue, and interestingly, the single they wrote for this film, The Dirt, was co-written by John Five, the guy that has now effectively replaced Mick Mars. Mars is still credited as a writer on the song also, but guess who isn't? Vince Neil. What a shock. And in 2021, Motley Crue sold their entire catalogue of music to BMG for $150 million. I mean, it kind of sounds like it's all about money. Obviously, Motley Crue wanted to tour again, but Mick wanted to retire. And I don't blame the guy. He's been on the road with these guys for 40-something years, and he's now 72 years old with a crippling disease. So the obvious answer would be to replace Mick with someone else, but it seemed like Crew tried to do it in a way where they wouldn't have to keep paying him. They offered him a kind of severance package, giving him 5% of the tour where he was replaced with John Five, as long as he agreed to give up any further financial shareholding or royalties in the band. Naturally, he said no. He said that was an insult to him. When they wanted to get high and fuck everything up, I covered for them. Now they're trying to take my legacy away. My part of Motley Crue. My ownership of the name, the brand. How can you fire Mr. Hines from Hines Ketchup? He owns it. Frank Sinatra's or Jim Hendrix's legacy goes on forever and their heirs continue to profit from it. They're trying to take that away from me. I'm not going to let them. It seems to me as if they fired the wrong guy. Not only that, they should have just called it quits years ago. They haven't even released an album since 2008, and the singer can't even sing. So why even keep Vince at this point? Well, we've been down that path before, haven't we, Motley Crue, when John Karabi became the lead singer, and literally nobody turned up to the shows. 
So this isn't about legacy. It's not even about keeping your reputation or making a good live show. It's clearly just about money and people are still willing to spend money to go and see them. But hey, it's only rock and roll, right? 